Recently on Westminster's What the F is Going On? David Cameron was a happy, chortling UK Prime Minister. Calm down, dear. Calm down. Calm down. Who was forced to leave Downing Street when he was replaced by Theresa. Theresa had won the Tory leadership contest by seeing off Andrea, who was betrayed by her clumsiness. I don't want this to be Andrea's got children, but Theresa hasn't. And rival Boris, who was betrayed by his best friend, Michael. While Boris has many talents and attributes, he wasn't capable of building that team. And Michael himself, who was betrayed by his personality. You brought down David Cameron, then you brought down Boris Johnson. Some people are saying that you are a kind of political serial killer. Meanwhile, with Labour, tensions were rising towards new leader Jeremy Corbyn. You see, Corbyn's new approach to politics was creating quite a stir. This Jeremy Corbyn, he's mad, isn't he? Railing against austerity and being against the Iraq war, which we definitely should have done, and being against bombing Syria. What an absolute lunatic. Back to the Tories. It is important to remember that three years ago, Dave had promised a public vote on whether the UK should leave the EU. You will decide, and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it. To stop his enemy Nigel pinching Tory MPs and voters for his party, UKIP. I'm Spartacus. But the plot thickens. You see, Dave thought he could avoid seeing through his manifesto pledge for a referendum by blaming his coalition government with Nick and the Lib Dems. But the Lib Dems were voted out, and now Dave's government was... 100% Conservative. Dave was happy once more. I woke up and Nigel Farage had gone too. There was a moment I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. But Farage had not gone. <laughs> he resigned after the 2015 election, but then quickly unresigned to campaign for Brexit. We want our country back. Having failed to connect with voters, Dave was now powerless to stop the Brexit camp from winning. Especially when Boris betrayed him. His gang was very, very well organized. And Jeremy wasn't much help to the Remain camp either. You think the EU is too beholden to corporate interests? There's a democratic deficit. Yes. 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 And so Dave jumped ship. I believe Theresa will provide strong and stable leadership. Now Theresa was Prime Minister and was having great fun goading Labour. A boss who doesn't listen to his workers? <laughs> Remind him of anybody. Indeed it did remind him of somebody, because Labour had big problems. 46 MPs have quit. The party is tearing itself apart. Surely he has to go. That's right. Labour MPs had launched a tabloid grabbing coup against Jeremy, staggering their resignations from his shadow cabinet to try and force him out. But Jeremy wouldn't budge. <laughs> and nearly 130,000 more people were joining the Labour Party. Meanwhile, the Labour Party machine was trying to block new members from voting, but the court had other ideas. Justice Hickenbottom has said, for the party to refuse to allow the claimants to vote in the current leadership election because they've not been members since the 12th of January would be unlawful as in breach of contract. This worried some Labour MPs who were uniting behind Owen Smith to stand against Corbyn. I'm pleased that we've got so many people voting in this election. It's a brilliant democratic exercise by the Labour Party. Hmm. So what will happen to the Labour Party as Jeremy and Owen lock horns over the leadership? Can Theresa keep pretending she wasn't right by the side of Dave when everything went pear-shaped? Will Dave be remembered for anything more than Brexit and trashing the economy? Find out next time on Westminster's What the F is Going On?